Hello guys, welcome to my channel AT Art. Today we will be discussing references in art and how to use them properly, or at least in my opinion, how to use them properly. Um, and in my and how I kind of see that is to essentially not to steal someone else's artwork or photography and to learn the most out of your references possible because it's not just while making the final product but to actually be able to learn while making it so that your next piece is even better than the last. Um, I really tried to find as many tips as possible from articles, other YouTube videos and from my own experience to put it all in one video highlighting what I feel is the most important things to know regarding references in art and how to use them. My personal approach to using references you'll see in this video, first we look for our main reference. This reference is what the majority of your inspiration is coming from. In this piece my main reference was the pose, which is this. I found it on Pinterest, um, you know, one of those uh, folders you kind of just abandon. Uh, yeah, it was named art and I just came across it. I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll make an artwork inspired by this. So yeah, this was my main reference. But if your reference was something like this, remember to not copy it, but to take from it what you like. Is it the eyes, nose, the pose, the hair? Take what you like and make the rest something else. Either from another reference photo or from your imagination. As you can see, my main reference photo is just a pose. So I kept it entirely. Just because, well, my reference photo has only one aspect to it. Um, when it comes to the hair and outfit, I use two other references, which are this and this. The colour palette and environment, however, are from my own imagination, didn't find anything that really uh, suited the rest of them, so I just kind of took what I felt would fit it. When it comes to making a final artwork, more references are better than fewer, but when it comes to practice, when it comes to learning a skill in art, then references should be used differently than how I just described. Everything just mentioned only applies if you are working on the final artwork, so the thing you'll hand in for your school project, or what you post on your art account on Instagram, or Tumblr, or DeviantArt, whichever. However, when it comes to art for you, and if you're starting out as a beginner, use simple references like this, this, or this. These kinds of references help establish fundamentals. How to tell a photo is good to practice from as a beginner is... How I would like to describe it in a simple way is to say the less busy it is, the better. That means straightforward poses to learn anatomy, like a face facing forward or to the side. That's easier to learn as a beginner than it is for, say, a three-quarter view of a face. And also simple environments to learn one or two techniques at a time, like here you would learn to make tree leaves and how to convey water. But as someone that already knows fundamentals and wants to go to more advanced references, you can use references like this, this, or this. What makes these references more complicated is the dynamic and techniques needed in them. This woman has her face in a complicated position that will need anatomy and foreshortening, foreshortening abilities um, that you will learn through small simpler uh, things. These hands are more complicated than this because there are two of them instead of one and it has a rhythm to it that will need to be conveyed and you will need the anatomy learned in this for you to be able to do this. Then we get to this landscape. It's extremely busy with mountains, trees, grass, metal, gravel and clouds needing to be conveyed which are all different uh, techniques. So yes, that's how you use references to learn things like anatomy, shadows and foreshortening. You see, references are a tool and guide to help the artist convey what they want to say or what they want to show. Or it can be used to learn, but they should never be used to copy. How you know you have successfully used a reference photo without stealing it in regards to a final artwork you claim as your own is to compare it to the main reference photo. Now imagine someone is following you on Instagram, comes across that main reference. Will they be able to link the two together? If so, you didn't change it enough. Remember, in today's age, unfortunately, nothing is completely new. It's either a remix or upgraded version of something else, 
or a combination of many elements already existing. A lot, if not all, artists use references on each piece to help with shading, proportion, poses, and much more. Lastly, references are good because if you attempt to draw lips as a beginner, it's going to look bad, and if you want to draw a dynamic pose from your imagination, it's more than likely to be wonky. As years go by, painting and drawing from your imagination will become better. However, no even professionals still use references. References can prevent your artwork from being flat and static. Don't be worried though if you're a beginner that has just started out and your drawings are static, regardless of using a reference photo, because what can be happening there is you haven't loosened up your hand. I'll make a separate video detailing exercises to do before you get to your final artwork. And if you're someone that feels restricted by photos online, then here's an idea for you. Sit down. Draw the sketch of what you want to do, exactly what you want to do. Then go find images online that fit your sketch. Let the images fit your imagination, not the other way around. Let them mirror what you want to convey. If you can't find pictures online, make use of your camera. If it's a dynamic pose, recreate the pose yourself or ask a friend or family member. You can also create your own references by photoshopping multiple photos from online or your own photos or a combination of both. To create that exact pose or flower field or house. This can mean stitching together a photo of your arm connected to the correct face, then the correct upper body position, then the correct lower body position. So go out there, get a photo that sparks creative juices and make something original. If you're a beginner, like you can do that or get a simple photo and teach yourself something new. Best of luck, bye! If you found this video useful, then I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe. And yeah, go make some art.